I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Let us pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for, for your goodness and mercy, Lord, follows us throughout our lives. And, Lord, that we are recipients of your goodness, O Lord Jesus. So, Father, we worship you this morning. Lord, we bless your name and, Lord, we praise you, Father, because all glory, honor, and praise belongs to you this morning. So, Lord, we ask that you, O Lord, will minister to us, that, Lord, that in, in, in our intercession and, Lord, even as, we, as your word is proclaimed, may you be glorified, Lord Jesus. May you, O Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit over us this morning as your people seek your face. We thank you, Lord, and we ask all of these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. Even as we continue worshiping our Lord, our Savior, this morning, let us sing our opening hymn, To God Be the Glory. Oh, 
We thank Thee each morning for a newborn day. Where we may work. Morning, Church. The theme we've chosen this morning is trusting God's promises to run our race. Trusting in God's promises to run our race. We picked up the verse from the Bible, from Hebrews 12, 1, which says, Let us run with endurance the race set before us. Let us run with endurance the race set before us. In our homes, we have pasted our promises, right? In our homes, in our kitchen doors, we have pasted our promises. And it's so familiar, the promises God has given us, we claim that. Promises from the Bible, and in Bible as well, there are many characters who have been holding on to God's promises. Paul, for that matter. When he, God said, you will go to Rome, when it's, there was a shipwreck, he was holding on to the pieces, but still, God took him to Rome because God promised him that he will go to Rome. So claim your promises, believe in your promises, exercise your promises this morning. It will help you when we move in these very, very uncertain times. So claim your promises. And when you run the race, let's claim God's promises to us. The songs we have picked up this morning, Mervyn calls it the LP record songs. Uh, the one of the songs is We Thank Thee, right? Very familiar old ones. I really encourage the old people, the young people, and all the people around in the IMC community to sing with us this morning. We thank thee. And then we move on to Standing on the Promises and a lovely medley of song, and we end with Great is Thy Faithfulness, O Lord. Great is Thy Faithfulness. We thank Thee each morning for a newborn day where we may work the fields of the newborn day. We thank Thee for the sunshine and the air that we breathe, O oh Lord. We thank Thee. We thank Thee for the rivers that run all day. Along the way, we thank thee for the trees and the deep blue sea, O oh Lord. We thank thee. Oh yes, we thank thee, Lord, for every flowers that bloom, birds that sing, fish that swim, and the light of the moon. We thank thee every day as we seal and pray. That we were born with eyes to see these things. We thank thee for the fields where clovers grow. We thank thee for the pastures where the cattle may roam. We thank thee for the love so pure and so sweet, O oh Lord. We thank thee. Oh yes, we thank thee, Lord, for that blooms, birds that sing, fish that swim, and the light of the moon. We thank Thee every day as we kneel and pray that we were born with eyes to see these things. We thank Thee for the fields where the clovers grow. We thank Thee for the pastures where the cattle may roam. We thank Thee for the love so pure and so free, O oh Lord. We thank Thee. As Tanity will show it in the PowerPoint here, the promises as we run our race. A lovely song to complement that, standing on the promises of God. I really want you, wherever you are sitting, standing, in your homes, wherever you are, I really want you to join hands together, clap hands together and sing this song, Standing on the Promises of God.
Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let the praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God Once more Standing on the promises of God is my King To eternal ages let the praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God We have picked up uh, some medley of very familiar choruses. Jehovah Jireh, Jesus put the song into my heart. You shall go out with joy. Abba Father, open <clears throat> our eyes, Lord. To get a touch from the Lord is so real today. A medley of very familiar songs and choruses. Please join, clap hands and join and sing this morning. Jehovah Jireh, my provider is grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider is grace is sufficient for me. My Lord shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. He gives his angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider is grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider is grace is sufficient for me. The Lord shall supply all my needs According to His riches and glory He will give His angels charge over me Jehovah Jireh cares for me For me, for me Jehovah Jireh cares for me Jesus put a song into our hearts Jesus put a song into our heart. It's a song of joy no one can take away. Jesus put a song into our heart. Jesus taught us how to live in harmony. Jesus taught us how to live in harmony. Different faces, different races, He made us one. Jesus taught us how to live in harmony. Jesus taught us how to be a family. Jesus taught us how to be a family. Loving one another with the love that He gives. Jesus taught us how to be a a family We shall go out with joy And be led forth with peace The mountains and the hills Shall break forth before you There'll be shouts of joy And all the trees of the fields And clap their, clap their hands And the trees of the fields Will clap their hands the trees of the fields will clap their hands. The trees of the fields will clap their hands. Well, you go on with joy. You shall go on with joy and be let forth.
forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you. There will be shouts of joy and all the trees of the fields will clap and clap their hands. And all the trees of the fields will clap their hands. The trees of the fields will clap their hands. The trees of the fields will clap their hands. The next part of the medley, we have chosen a little bit more softer songs where you can worship the Lord. The starting one is Abba Father, my college time favorite. Abba Father, never let me go alone. back to the theme we had this morning trust in god's promises to run the race just see these flowers in the crevices of the rocks they trust god they are able to bloom in difficult circumstances but still able to trust god great is his faithfulness at the moment before we go into time of worship we would like to sing the song with you great is your faithfulness just remember all the great things god has done in your life small little things big ones 
remember his great faithfulness Great is thy faithfulness O God my father there is no shadow of turning with thee thou changest not thy compassions they fail not as thou hast been the forever will be great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning your mercies i see all i have needed thy hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness for unto me summer and winter and springtime and harvest sun moon and stars in their courses above join with all nature in manifold blessings to thy great faithfulness mercy and love great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning you mercies i see all i have needed thy hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness lord unto me Next few moments we spent in prayer, drawing ourselves before the presence of God, bringing our petitions and our prayers, and our thanksgiving unto God. Just an encouragement from the scripture. It says, On God rests my salvation and my glory, my mighty rock, my refuse is God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuse for us. Even as we live in this world as believers of Christ Jesus, let us continue to trust him at all times. In whatever the condition we are in, let us continually lean on him, draw near to him, have that faith and trust in him because God is the one who gives us the protection, he is our refuge and our strength. Shall we look to God in prayer? Our gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the wonderful way you blessed our lives in the past days and sustained us until now. We are grateful to the Father for the wonderful blessings with which you have filled our lives, even as we worship and adore your holy name. We do want to remember all that you have done in each one of our lives, and we want to be grateful to you for all the things you have done to us. This morning, our Lord, we come before your throne of grace, praying for our church and our fellowship and all the families that are connected to our church. We want to pray for your hand of blessing upon all of us and upon the church. We ask your blessing, Lord, upon all the activities that are done online these days. Enable the hearts of the people to connect each time and participate in all these activities that our lives would be greatly blessed and revived and renewed. 
with your grace and mercy. We especially pray, Father, for the WSCS program that is being held in four sessions of understanding the end times and your second coming. Pray, Father, we'll be able to grow stronger in your faith and also will be able to understand this aspect of the end time. You will bless the word and bless the servant who is going to share the word in all these sessions. We do pray, Father, for our families at this time. We want to commit all our children, those who are studying into your mighty hands, Lord, Lead and guide them, Lord, with your wisdom and strength that they will grow well in their academic careers. We do pray, Father, for all our senior citizens. Yes, Lord, in this age, we seek your presence with all of them. Revive them, giving them good health and strength that they all will know that their God, whom they believe, is with them, taking care of their lives in every way. We do thank you, Father, for all the people who are working in different places. Bless their jobs, bless their, pay, their workplaces, and the placement they have, that, Lord, they will grow well in their professional life, that their jobs would be secured, and they'll be more and more responsible, and they'll be able to serve the organization, the companies they are connected to. We do pray, Father, for those people who are seeking the jobs. Pray that you will guide and lead them to a right place where they will be able to secure the job, and they will earn their livelihood. This morning, O oh Lord, we come before your throne of grace, especially praying, Father, for all those who are sick in our church and they are under treatment. We especially remember Reverend Michael Srinivasan, Mr. Emmanuel Samuel, Mrs. Cynthia David, Mrs. Hepsi David. We commit them, Lord, into your mighty presence at this moment. We ask, Lord, your hand of healing will be upon them. Whatever the condition they are in, Lord, they need your grace, your mercy, and the power of healing touching their physical bodies. Pray, Father, that you will raise them up to your good health and strength, that they will rejoice in the great God, who is the God who heals all diseases. We do thank you, Father, for the recovery given to several of the people who were not keeping well. We want to thank you, Lord, for the healing that you brought into their lives. Especially at this time, we want to bring the before your throne of grace, Lord, the bereaved family of our dear friend, colleague, Reverend Dev Prasad, Yes, Lord, you obeyed your calling, and he is with you now, forever. It is in your will and purpose, Lord. You will call us back to the home where we belong always, even as he has wished that the heavenly place to be with you, to live forever. We want to ask your peace and comfort and your strength to the family members that he left behind. We ask, Lord, you will care for them, you will provide to them, you will be their peace and comfort even as they undergo this time of bereavement. We thank you, Father, for the services of Reverend Dev Prasad to the Methodist Church in India and his faithfulness to you through his service, even as he served as pastor in several other responsibilities, you have been glorified 
through his service. You want to commit his family into your mighty presence, Lord. We do pray this time, Lord, for our own nation, India. We thank you, Father, for this great nation. And even as the nation is celebrating the Independence Day, we want to ask your blessing and your grace and mercy upon this entire nation, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, for the diversity this country enjoys with so many languages, communities, and you have kept this nation in a greater unity, and you have blessed this nation with several of the resources. Pray that, Lord, this country will continually grow in different areas, and the people in this nation will live in a greater peace and a harmony, and you will be Lord of this nation, and bless this nation, O Heavenly Father. We do ask, Lord, for your blessings upon all the leaders at the helm of affairs. They always will be led by your heavenly wisdom and knowledge, even as they give leadership to this nation. This morning, O oh Lord, we do want to pray, Father, for birthdays and wedding anniversaries. We thank you, Lord, for all of them and the wonderful way you brought them until now even as they step into another new year of their life and of their married life. You will make a way for them to walk and live their life even in this new year. That they will be faithful to you and they continually grow as your children, enjoying your mighty blessings in their life. We want to claim the promise for all of them, Lord, even as the psalmist says, Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Yes, Lord, these people will really experience and receive that promise and live their life for the glory of your mighty name. Bless the word that you have kept for us for our meditation. This morning, O oh Lord, even as it is shared by your servant, give him every strength. Bless the words. Give us the listening ears that we'll be able to receive the word even as it comes to us. That our hearts and our lives will be greatly transformed and greatly blessed. Once again, Father, we want to commit all of us into your mighty care and keeping. And we pray this prayer in the most holy name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to say, our Father what in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as he forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. I want to take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you to our morning worship service. What, what a privilege and, and what a joy it is to come together, even though we are worshiping in our homes. Uh, and as we worship, we believe that God is able to minister to us in our places this morning. A uh, couple of quick announcements. We continue to uh, ask the church to continue to pray for the WSCS event, uh, the webinar series that is going on uh, for the last two weeks uh, on the second coming of uh, Christ. And we ask that you continue to pray for these uh, sessions that God will minister to each and every one of us. We also, uh, from the pastoral team, we continue to thank each and every one of you for your contribution and for your support to the ministry of the church. At this moment, I want to take this opportunity to wish uh, those who are celebrating their wedding anniversary and their birthdays. We thank God that uh, for another new year and we pray blessing over you uh, as you celebrate, as you step into this new year. 
and God's word reminds us and, and I pray that this will be the promise that you will hold on to, that his word and, and this promise that comes from Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 to 13, it says, for I, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, but give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me, and when you search for me with all your heart. And we pray that this morning, even as you celebrate your birthdays and wedding anniversaries in this coming week, we pray that you will seek the Lord in this new year with all your heart. And, and His promise, and God promises that when we call upon Him, that he will listen and he will answer. May God bless and add more blessings in this coming here in each and every one of your lives. Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we meditate upon the scripture this morning, I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Philemon, chapter 1, verses 8 to 12. Chapter 1, verses 8 to 12. Let me read it out for you. Therefore, although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do, yet I prefer to appeal to you on the basis of love, it is as none other than Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus, that I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. Verse 11, formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, who is my very heart, back to you. This is the word of the Lord God Almighty. Let us bow our heads and look unto the Lord in prayer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto thee, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. When we talk about a human relationship, you know, in that relationship, both parties must work to rebuild the bridges if there are any, any, any misunderstandings. 
But in our relationship with God, it is very different. It is always the Lord who does the work of rebuilding. So this morning, as we meditate upon the topic, restoration of the broken bridge, we have a story of a slave. We have a story of a thief who robbed his master and goes on a journey. A far country intended never to return back again. In doing so, he not only disobeys, but he breaks all the covenantal relationship with his master. He breaks the contract, the agreement that they had between each other. He breaks the relationship and goes you know, on rock. And in his rebellion, you know, he burns down the very bridge which connected between him and his master. So the book of Philemon, there is only one chapter and has 25 verses and it contains the story of Onesimus. The story revolves around three main characters. One, Omnisimus, the offender. Two, the Philemon, the offended. Three, the Apostle Paul, the mediator, who was in the middle, who was trying to work and mend their ways between them and build the very bridge that was broken between Philemon and Onesimus. When we look at the background of this very text, we understand that this is one of the smallest book written by Apostle Paul. It was written from the very prison. That is why it is called as prison epistles, along with book of Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and including Philemon. And the history says when Paul was in prison in Rome, he wrote this letter. So the letter is written from the Rome in the AD 61. So today, you know, when, you know, Onesimus, when he robbed Philemon, he runs to Rome, which is almost a 1,500 kilometers. When he, when he reached Rome, he meets the Apostle Paul. And when he meets Apostle Paul, he hears the gospel. And upon hearing the gospel, he is saved. And now Paul is sending him back with a letter, you know, to the Philemon, to the Colossae. So Paul here plays a very important role of restoring, you know, restoring Onesimus, you know, back in the very relationship with Philemon. Here, when Apostle Paul shares the gospel, the truth, and when he counseled him, when, when after everything, Onesimus, in his confusion, not knowing what to do, you know, in that dilemma, you know, whether to stay back or return back to my master and ask or seek the forgiveness. So that is where Apostle Paul plays a very important role in restoring the very relationship that was broken between Onesimus and his master, Philemon. So today, as we meditate upon the topic, restoration of the broken bridge, let us understand how Apostle Paul rebuilt that very bridge and build, you know, rebuild the very relationship that was broken, how he did it. So today I would like to bring quickly three things from this passage. Number one, how he did it is with the message of reconciliation. With the message of reconciliation. Who is Onesimus? Onesimus is a slave, a runaway slave, a thief, you know, who stole the precious things from his master. A runaway person, you know, intended never to return back again. On the other hand, we have Philemon. Who is Philemon? A wealthy man, a righteous man, a godly man. Because Apostle Paul clearly tells us that, you know, in the house of Philemon, there was the church who were meeting. You know, who had love towards God, who was having reverence for God. You know, who was having love for the saints. So when we have, you know, Onesimus and Philemon, when Paul sends Onesimus back to Philemon, back to Colossae, you know, you know it, is, it is understood that for all the things that Onesimus did, you know, Philemon had reason to put him to death. 
or punish him with a severe punishment. Because according to the Roman law, it is, it, is, it, is, it is right to punish his slave if they rob, if they you know, stole, or if they disobey the master. So Onesimus, he could be easily killed or branded with the title of thief on the forehead. But here, Apostle Paul, you know, is not, you know, you know, you know, asking anything from Philemon, but instead urging him, interceding, pleading on behalf of the ominous, a thief, a sinner, and tells Philemon that welcome him back, not as slave, but as brother in Christ. Look at the beautiful passage that we have. Apostle Paul was very clear in his statement saying, Welcome him back, not as a slave, but as a brother in Christ. And he goes on to say, Not for my sake, but for the sake of love. Because, you know, we are all one in Christ. We are all the same, you know, you know parts of the same body. And the head of that body is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he goes on to say, we are all brother in Christ and, and our father, you know, our spiritual father is one who is in heaven. And secondly, he goes on to guarantee the Philemon, he is, you know, in saying that now Onesimus is a changed person. Before he was, you know, good for nothing. But now he has been changed. He has been changed inwardly. He has been transformed. And he goes on to say, now he is useful to you and to me. The very meaning of omniscience is here. It says, you know, useful. That is on the other hand. So firstly, he urges you know, Philemon saying, welcome him back. Secondly, he guarantees. And thirdly, he says, I will compensate whatever he has stolen from you. He says, put it in my account. I'm going to repay everything. And fourthly, he says, consider giving him his freedom. According to the slave, you know, the rule, according to the law, a slave can be freed only after seven years. But here, Apostle Paul is urging, you know, Philemon to consider his freedom. And fifthly, you know, he asks Philemon, forgive him, show him the grace, and accept him as one of the brothers in Christ. So in doing all these things, Paul was restoring the broken bridge. How? It was only, you know, with the message of reconciliation. So here, reconciliation means it is an act of bringing people together to be a friendly again or coming to an agreement. Or a person who is truly sorry for what he or she has done, repents for it and confesses it. And, and agrees to come back you know, to the former glory, come back to the former relationship and the friendship. For example, two siblings who mend their relationship after a period of fighting. So here, Paul goes on to say that you do not accept him back as slave and you do not have that relationship of master and slave, you know, because he says it is temporary, but rather accept him as a brother in Christ which is permanent, which is an eternal relationship, which talks about a spiritual relationship. Because you are no longer separate, you are no longer two people, but you are all same. Because you worship, you have the same Father who is in heaven. So my dear friends, here Apostle Paul, you know, mends the way, you know, by the very message of reconciliation. And that is how he builds the very broken bridge, you know, that was broken between Philemon and Omnisimus. So here, you know, reconciliation, you know, has two aspects. One is the horizontal aspect, and second, reconciliation has the vertical aspect. The horizontal aspect is about man to another man. For example, you know, woman to another woman. It is the human relationship. But reconciliation, the vertical aspect is between God and humankind. So here, when Apostle Paul emphasizes on reconciliation, it has two aspects. One is horizontal and second is vertical. 
So here, the message of reconciliation has the power to change people. It can change anyone. Look at it has changed Omnisimus. It has the power to restore anything. It has restored Omnisimus and Philemon. It has power to transform anyone. Look at this slave who was changed, who was transformed to be sonship. So from slavery to sonship. So here, the word priest in Latin is pontifex. Pontifex. So here, the Lord being our, our, our high priest simply means he is a bridge builder. You know, when we see in the creation narrative, after the fall, the Lord sends them out. The Lord punishes them. And, and Adam and Eve were dead, for, you know, physically. Adam and Eve were dead spiritually. Adam and Eve were dead eternally. And, and after the, you know, after when Adam and Eve came out, you know, from the very Eden garden, we see that no matter what they did, they could not come back to the very relationship that, that they had with the Lord God Almighty. But after so many years, the Lord sent his only son who incarnate in the flesh and died on the cross of Calvary, you know, who built that very broken, you know, relationship, that very broken bridge. So today, when Apostle Paul emphasizes on the message of reconciliation, similarly, the Lord has become a high priest who intercedes for us, who pleads for us, you know, who urges our, you know, God the Father to accept us as we are, with all our sinful nature, with all of, in our infirmities, if we repent, if we accept the Lord as our personal Savior. So when the Lord came to this earth, there was no longer Jewish and Gentiles. There was no longer rich and poor. The Lord built the very bridge. The Lord built the bridge between the righteous and sinners. The Lord built the bridge between the immorals, the prostitutes, the sinners, the tax collectors. The Lord builds the bridge between the marginalized people, the lepers and the sick. The Lord built the, the very bridge between God and heretics, the Samaritans and pagans. The Lord built the bridge between God and the people who were weak, you know, who could not you know, save themselves, who have no power nor the knowledge you know, who, about the transformation. So today, my dear friends, when Jesus came and pleaded for us, you know, has built this bridge, today it is a question to all of us, are we willing to change? Are we willing to accept him as a personal savior? Or are we willing to go back and mend our ways? Or undo things and redo things, you know, to the, our beloved ones, to the things we, where we have failed? Or are we willing to forgive one another because the Lord has forgiven us? Because the Lord has received us? Because the Lord has accepted us as we are? So this is the first thing which I would like to emphasize. So Apostle Paul, you know, how he restored the broken bridge between Philemon and Onesimus is by, you know, with the message of reconciliation. Secondly, how he restored the broken bridge, you know, by, you know, you know, with the willingness to pay the price. He was willing to pay the price. Here we read in the scripture, Apostle Paul was very clear in telling Philemon, whatever he has stolen from you, you know, put it in my account, I'm going to repay you. So Paul is very clear, you know, in, in saying that whatever you know, laws you have faced, you know, put it on me because I'm going to repay. But the beauty, you know, here lies, you know, in the very scripture when Paul is ready to sacrifice everything for this unknown person, for this sinner, for this stranger, for this undeserving person. And I'm very sure when Philemon saw, you know, the Onesimus on his door, he must have been very angry. He would have thought, like, I would go, I'm going to punish him right away. But Onesimus did not came, you know, come alone, but he brought the letter of Paul, which read it very clearly, you know, in, in you know, saying, accept him back, not as slave, but as a brother in Christ. And whatever, you know, he has stolen from you, I'm going to repay it. 
The pleading was there. The interceding was there. The urge was there. So I'm very sure he might not have accepted Onesimus because of his repentance, because of the things that he has done, because of the goodness of Onesimus, but it is purely, you know, it is the interceding of Apostle Paul. So it is not by the face of Omnismus, but it is because of the letter that Paul, you know, you know wrote to the Philemon. So similarly, when, when the Lord pleads for us, when we stand in the presence of God like an advocate, you know, he says, I'm going to pay, you know, everything that he has stolen from you. And that is where we see on the cross of Calvary, he says, I have paid it full. And we call it as the atoning sacrifice of the Lord, of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, whenever you go to a tabernacle, you know, God would always find you out with your sinful nature. Because, you know, the scripture says, you know, all have committed sin and fallen short of the glory of God. And, and behold, if you go, you know, in the tabernacle to the holy place, you have to carry a sacrifice. You know, you commit a smaller mistake, you commit a smaller sin, you know, there is a sacrifice accordingly. So whenever, you know, you go to a tabernacle, the Lord always demanded the sacrifice for your sins. But in the Old Testament, all the sacrifices were temporary. And, and we see from the tabernacle that the only high priest was allowed to visit in the most holy place, that too once in a year. And, you know, and on the day of Passover, where he would intercede for the whole nation. So, you know, similarly, in the New Testament, on the cross of Calvary, the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, sacrificed himself as a living sacrifice once for all. He paid it, you know, for all the humankind. And thereafter, whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. When he said, Lord, you know, in your hand, in thy hand, I submit my spirit. The moment the Lord gives, you know, himself up on the cross of Calvary, the Lord torn the, you know, you know, the very curtain of the tabernacle. The scripture, you know, tells us the curtains were torn from top to bottom. And that is where God, you know, you know, rebuilt that broken relationship which was broken in the creation, you know, by our forefathers in the sinful nature. So today, my dear friend, God by himself paying the very price justified us. And, you know, justification simply means it's a God's act of removing the guilt and penalty of sin while at the same time making a sinner righteous through Christ's atoning sacrifice. So we are no longer, you know, sinner. We are no longer thief. We are no longer undeserving, unworthy, but we are righteous and holy in the sight of God. So today, you see, in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ, in his sacrifice, in his payment, we receive the direct access where we can stand in the presence of God, now accessing his glory, you know, talking to him face to face and making known to him all our prayers and petitions this morning. So today, you know, the Lord has restored the broken bridge between God and man. So do you believe in the atoning power of the work of the Lord Jesus Christ? If you say yes, let us understand, even in the book of Philemon, you know, the same thing happened when Apostle Paul said, I'm going to pay the price. I'm going to, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know carry the very cost, the very you know, stolen things, the precious things, and, and you can put in my account, you know, that is where even the Lord says, Father, forgive them, they do not know what they are doing. So since the Lord has paid it full, today it is my question to all of us, to all of you, that are you willing to give him, you know, you know back something, you know, the best that you have? The Lord did not hold anything. He paid it full. He gave it full. And today he is expecting the same thing from us. So are you willing to sacrifice the best that you have? Or are you willing to sacrifice your ego, your jealousy, you know, your anger, your habits? Or are you willing to you know, build that broken relationship horizontally or vertically which you have lost? 
So today, you know, how Apostle Paul built that broken relationship, you know, with his willingness to pay the price in the same manner the Lord has built the broken bridges between God and man. So today he is demanding the same from us. You know, we are no longer slaves, we are no longer thieves, but we are the children of the Most High. And today, as we have received this forgiveness, the Lord wants the same thing with the others. You know, the Lord wants us to forgive, you know, others so that he, even we will build the broken relationship, the broken bridge horizontally. So this is the second thing we see from this passage. So number one, with the message of reconciliation, you know, Apostle Paul restored the broken bridge. And secondly, with the willingness to pay the price, Apostle Paul restored the broken bridge. And thirdly, how he restored the broken bridge is with the gift of love, with the gift of love. At the end, Apostle Paul was sure that Philemon would do more than what he was asked. Because, you know, you know he was a believer. Why? Because he had the love for God. Because he had a reverence for God. Because he loved the saints. We see in the history that Onesimus is accepted and more than that, Onesimus had become one of the great leader in the early church. So today, with the gift of love, you know, Apostle Paul achieved you know, great things. With the gift of love, Philemon achieved greater things. With the gift of love, Onesimus achieved greater things in life. Similarly, when we were running away from God, when we were hiding from God in our sinful nature, that is where God sent his son, John chapter 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, it says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. In his unconditional love, he became sin for us. Sin was not in him, but sin was upon him on that very cross. In the same way, with love, with the gift of love, Apostle Paul sends omniscience with the confidence that Philemon would do more than what he was asked for. So today, you know, similarly, the Lord in his unconditional love bears all our sins and takes away all our guilt and penalty. You know, we were people who were supposed to receive the death penalty, but now because of the Lord's work, you know, because of the Lord, you know, building that broken bridge, now we have a life in abundance. Now we have name, we have identity, we have fame, you know, we have freedom, we have eternal life. So today, my dear friends, those who have received his love, you know, has received, you know, the very relationship and has mended their ways and have reconciled with God. So you're no longer, you know, you know, you know, separate entity, but you are a child of God. You no longer get what you deserve, but you, you, know, you are given grace, you are given mercies, and, and you are given hope like Onesimus. So today, scripture says, love covers multitude of sins, can build the broken bridges, and can go an extra mile to do or to save someone. It does not envy, it does not have pride, but it fulfills the law. So today, when, when we as a Christian fail in, in, in you know, building the bridge, understand we do not have the gift of love. So we remain you know, slaves to our old nature. If we do not have love in us, you know, we remain the same. We, you know, we have fear, we have superstitions, you know, we still be running, you know, we will be still rebelling, you know, God and, and disobeying him and, and turning, you know, our backs and, and we will be living our lives in our sinful world, in our sinful nature. But if we have, you know, love, if you love God, we will also love others. Look at the Lord's prayer. It says, Lord, forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
So in all the points we see the reconciliation, we see that God wants you and me to pay the price, you know, in, 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 with the gift of love, you know, which has, you know, two aspects, that is one, one is horizontal and one is vertical. So today, my dear friends, in midst of all this, you know, God is saying, no matter what, you know, you know, journey you're going through, no matter what situation and circumstances you're going through, you know, you become that instrument where you will be building the bridge, not the walls. So dear friends, at the end, you know, as we live in this world, we have different, you know, ways of living. We have bhakti marga, we have jnana marga, we have karma marga, we have yoga marga. But you know, in the midst of all this, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and life. You know, he being our advocate, he being our high priest, you know, he ever pleads for us and, and always builds that broken bridge. And he always mends our ways. And in, in the cross, you know, whoever look at the cross and focuses, he always reconciles us. He always makes us righteous. He always, you know, makes us holy. He always accepts us as we are. Not as slaves, not as sinners, but the children of the Most High. He will not accept us as slaves, but he will fully, you know, justify us and makes us, you know, righteous and holy, you know, perfect and, and accept us, you know, as, you know, bride and forgives us and makes us complete and gives us that inheritance, that position that we have lost once. So today, you know, as we meditate upon the topic, restoration of the broken bridge, today Apostle Paul teaches us three ways how we can restore our broken relationship. Number one, with the message of reconciliation. Number two, by paying the cost, by paying the price. And thirdly, with the gift of love. So my dear friends, if you have these three ingredients, these three key aspects in your life, you can reconcile, you know, you know, you know, you know, horizontally with man to man and vertically with God. So my dear friends, may the good Lord bless you all with this sharing so that God, you know, who is the creator and the sustainer, you know, restoration of our faith also will restore our broken bridges. Shall we bow our heads and look unto the Lord in prayer? Our gracious God, Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, for this very beautiful Sunday that you have added in our lives. We thank you, O Lord, for talking to us, speaking to us on the topic of restoration of the broken bridges. Yes, O Lord, we were a people, O Lord, once upon a time, living in darkness, without name, without identity, without hope, without future. But Lord, you came down to earth 2,000 years ago, died on the cross of Calvary with your precious blood. Oh Lord, you paid the full price and have saved us. And oh Lord, gave us the new identity, made us new creation and accepted us as we are and washed us with your precious blood and made us, oh Lord, white as snow. And oh Lord, have given us the life in abundance. Father, as we have meditated upon a Lord, the very character, a Lord Onesimus, a Lord, we understand that how Apostle Plowed, a Lord, pleads him, pleads for him, a Lord, to Philemon in the same way you pleads us, a Lord, in the presence of God Almighty to the Father, a Lord, a Lord, for all our sins, intercedes for us, a Lord, advocates for us, and a Lord bears all the guilt and penalty on you, and a Lord forgives us and accepts us, and a Lord. Lord, makes us worthy children to live a life of success, to live a life of victory. Father, once again, today, this morning, as we have heard the word, help us to mend our ways, not only with you, but also with our, our Lord fellow beings, a Lord fellow neighbor, a Lord with our siblings, with our, our Lord parents, a Lord with our friends, a Lord with a Lord the people whom we live here on this earth. Father, today you become that very bridge builder of Father God. You are our pontifex. Yes, O Lord, indeed, you are a God who builds the broken things. Father, today help us, O Lord, to mend our ways and you build the broken things and make us beautiful. And O Lord, let we may be used for the higher purposes. Father, once again, summiting the sermon and the day into your mighty hand, we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
Shall we sing our closing hymn? The peace of God which passed all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you.